This is lesson 6-4, which is logarithmic functions. Our essential question is, how is the relationship between logarithmic and exponential functions revealed in the key features of their graphs? So the first thing we're going to look at is how to graph y equals log base 2 of x. Most calculators don't have anything but log base 10 or log base e. So um, we will talk about, some some do, and we'll talk about that in future lessons, but um, so how do we graph log base 2 if we don't have the ability or don't have Desmos so that we can just type it in? Um, so we can, we can graph it by graphing the inverse function. So that would be y equals 2 to the x, and then finding the inverse by flipping the table of values. So then this is y equals log base 2 of x. So you can see that the x values and the y values are just flipped in these two tables. And you can tell they're inverses because their graphs reflect over that y equals x line. So our domain um, of our log function is all real numbers that are greater than 0, which we know because we can't take the log of a negative number. Our range is all real numbers. Our x-intercept this time is 1 because we know y-intercept on an exponential is 1. Um, talks about the asymptote is now the y-axis, so we have a vertical asymptote for our log function instead of a horizontal asymptote. And then with the end behavior, you can see it's just flipped from what we talked about with the exponential. Okay, so then transformations. We're not going to actually graph this, but we're going to talk about what the transformation would be from the parent function, which is just f of x equals log base 2 of x. So our basic transformations, so this is going to be a log of x minus h plus k. And so we know that a, h, and k that we've seen in every chapter since the very first one. So this transformation here would just tell us that our log function is going to move left 3. And then I have another example that I put in the notes, g of x equals 5 log base 2 of x minus 1. So the 5 is our a value. That would be a vertical stretch by a factor of 5. And the minus 1 would be a shift down 1. Okay, so how do we find algebraically the equation of the inverse function? So we've done this before, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to first change it to x and y, and then to find the inverse, we try to draw a better plus there, okay, we're going to switch the x and the y, so this would be x equals 10 to the y plus 1, and then we're going to solve for y. So in order to solve for y, we would need to switch this into log form, so this would become log base 10 of x equals y plus 1. And then we don't really have to write the log base 10 because, or the base 10 part, because we know that that's understood. So log of x equals y plus 1, and then my last step would be to subtract 1 from both sides. So that means my inverse of f of x is equal to log of x minus 1. Okay, now our other example over here is the log equation. So I'm going to write it as y equals log base 7 of x plus 5. So again, I'm going to switch the x and the y. So x equals log base 7 of y plus 5. Then I'm going to switch the form. So this would become 7 to the x equals y plus 5. Subtract 5 from both sides. So my inverse of g of x is equal to 7 to the x minus 5. Okay, and our last example here says logarithmic functions can approximate the altitude of a plane over time. So which plane's altitude shows the greater rate of change over the interval 10 to 15? So it says the t is the minutes after takeoff. So if we look at the first one, we have an equation to go by. So if we want to find the um, average rate of change, we want to find when t is 10 and when t is 15. So if we start with... 9,200 natural log of 10 
plus 1,000. That's going to give us 22,184. And then we're going to do that same equation, but this time we're going to use 15. And we get 25,914. And then I want to find the average rate of change. So remember, average rate of change is like finding the slope or the change in y over the change in x. So change in y would be 25914 minus 22,184 over 15 minus 10. So that's going to give us 746. And then we are going to, so that was plane A. So I'm going to put plain A over here is 746. Then I'm going to erase this so I have room to write the other one. Okay, so then we're given points for plane B. So we can just plug those points into our average rate of change or slope formula. So this would be 39449 minus 37497 over 15 minus 10. So that's going to give us about 390.4. So 390. So that tells us that plane A has a greater rate of change over the interval 10 to 15. Okay, let me know.